to the Power Options suite of tools. I'll go ahead and ask everyone to start queuing up your questions that you might have. Um, let's see here, regarding, of course, the Power Options or the Power Options suite of tools. For those of you that are just starting off, perhaps, on a 14-day free trial, um, I just want to remind you that you can follow these four steps to get better acquainted with the tools on the site and on Power Options as well. Uh, flash tutorials, the live webinars we host during the week, of course, and the individual coaching session. Uh, tr any trial member or subscriber can sign up for uh, the free individual coaching sessions. You can have as many as you want. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we don't charge for those. And there's also a wealth of information available in the Learning Center for different, if you go into the Learning Center, excuse me, underneath the main home tab, um, archive tip sheets, flash tutorials, archived webinars, there's a variety of those there, um, options education links, of course, and general market activity information. All right, let's see here. Got a couple questions coming in. It looks like this is from Wayne. Talked to Wayne earlier. Um, Okay, I'm sorry, let's just see here. Ah. Okay, Wayne, I'm sorry, Wayne, I just wanted to make sure I understood your question. Wayne has uh, just started out with Power Options, and uh, as many of you know, we have a portfolio tool which tracks your open positions. And rather than entering them all in manually right now, Wayne would like to be able to import his existing portfolio into the Power Options tools um, to start tracking them with Power Options and using... Um, excuse me, using the uh, position analysis screen to analyze potential rollout opportunities. Now, Wayne, we have our programmers looking into this, um, on, into a way that you might be able to reverse export it, uh, for example. There isn't a way right now to import your portfolio directly, your existing positions directly into the Power Options portfolio tool. So right now, they still have to be entered manually. Um, in the past, Greg and I have uh, helped new users enter those in, so you don't have to do them all by yourself. Um, once or some of those positions in for you so that you can start tracking them. But right now, Wayne, we do not have a direct import. Uh, the programmers, Ernie and myself, are looking at um, evaluating, I don't want to say evaluating, that's the wrong word, <laughs> enhancing the portfolio tools in the next couple of months. So we'll probably have a release in the near future. Um, where we'll have a lot of enhancements in the portfolio, including easy ways to import or export um, from different Excel spreadsheets, perhaps, into the portfolio tool. All right, let's see here. Greg wants to know, can portfolio data be imported into the power f from a broker or data file instead of manual? Um, Greg has the same question. <laughs> um, Greg, that's essentially the same question. Right now, there's a, not a direct import um, into, I'm sorry, there's not a direct import in the Power Options tools from a broker or a data file. Again, the programmers are working on something. It's going to have to be done most likely through Excel or through some other form, maybe quick and even. Um, the reason why is that every we can't go directly from broker to broker simply because every broker has their own different version of uh, how they track the positions and what columns that they use. While I'm talking, let me just navigate over to the profit and loss portfolio here into the portfolio tools. All right, so let's see here. Yeah, so we are going to work on that, Greg, but we just don't have one available right now. And Greg also wants to know is when I'm tracking positions or I'm in the main search tool, for example, um, I can use the more information buttons to go ahead and link to uh, the broker link, for example. Let's see here. Oh, there's an open position. I apologize. The broker link, which allows me to uh, close the position, close the leg. Right now, the broker link is only available through Options Express and Brokers Express. Um, we don't have any other brokers available with the broker link at this time. Um, we... <laughs> We were in discussion with Thinkorswim before they got bought out by Ameritrade. Um, we were looking at some of those val uh, potentials there, excuse me, of linking to Thinkorswim. Um, but that all kind of stopped once TD Ameritrade went in and bought out uh, Thinkorswim. But uh, if there's a specific broker, Greg, that you would like to use, or you would like to see in the broker link, um, a broker that you're using, and you have a contact with your broker, um, you may just want to contact them and say it'd be really convenient. You have the suite of tools that you use for your options research and analysis, and uh, just tell them that you might like to see it linked there, and that might get the conversation rolling. Um, or if you have some contact information, we might take a look at that, and we'll 
uh, try to contact them and see if we can work with uh, a broker that you suggest or um, a broker that you're currently using right now. All right, let's see here. Okay. All right, question, is there a tool for providing a list of dividend-paying stocks and how much monetary value the dividend is? And this is possible, how do we sort for that? In the main search tools, Wayne, we don't show the monetary amount for the dividend. We show the percentage annual dividend. We don't have a specific stock list of dividend-paying stocks, but let's say, for example, Wayne, you were interested in doing positions uh, let's just say covered call positions, for example, on dividend-paying stocks. Well, I would just go into my search menu here, go into the covered call menu, and we'll go into search. And we have our okay, it's default criteria here. So I scroll down, and we're just taking a look at the initial values uh, default covered call screen. Now, what you'd want to do is keep your same criteria. You, you can create a screen just to look for uh, any stock that pays a dividend. And I'll show you how to do that. But what I'd want to do is put in my criteria that I'm looking for in the strategy. If you're doing covered calls, married puts, um, if you're doing just uh, you know other kinds of positions, uh, collars where you're long stock, for example, and you want to uh, include the dividend with your other criteria, you just use the percent dividend yield, of course, and we'll just put in our minimum requirements in the parameter field. So let's say I only want to see stocks that match my other call, other covered call criteria that pay at least a 3% annual dividend. All right, so we'll just add that in, and we'll go ahead and click Submit These Settings. And now I see I've narrowed my list down to uh, only about nine stocks that match those other covered call requirements, um, but still have at least a 3% dividend annualized, annualized dividend. Now, I don't see the column here for the annualized dividend, so I can just go to See More or Less Columns, this will take us to the configuration page. And I'll select percent dividend yield. And for my stock information, the available data I can see for the stock, and over on the right is the option information. I'll select that dividend yield. And then we'll go ahead and click on Save and Return. It'll just ask us to refresh the page to reload the data. And now the percent dividend yield. Um, I have TAL, it pays a 5.4% annualized dividend. Foot Locker pays a 3%, CTC 5.4, um, Tech Stainer Group Holdings 3.7%, and so forth. And Mattel, of course, at 3.2. Uh, now that's that matched the other criteria already, because I still, if I'm doing a covered call search and I want to include dividends, I'm still going to want to use the other criteria. I want to look for stocks in an uptrend that match my fundamental criteria, my minimum percentage return. Now. If you just wanted to create your own list or view which stocks across the entire universe of options paid at least, let's say, a 3% dividend, what I would do is scroll down to the very bottom of the search menu, and I'm going to hit Clear These Settings. That's going to empty everything out of the parameter field. Now, I'm going to select the next available month, which is December, but at the same time, I'm going to use a days to expiration of greater than 8 I, should, I could use greater than seven. The reason I'm doing that is I'm going to filter out the weekly options. I'm using the covered call screen now, Wayne, as a stock screen. So what I'm going to do is limit the range out of the money, my number of strikes, to be just between one to one. I'm doing this because I only want to see one possible strike for every stock. I know Mattel, as we saw before, pays a 3.2% dividend. But if I just left it open and screened for stocks that pay that 3.2% dividend, I'd have all maybe 15 or 20 strikes for December for Mattel, and that's too much to go through. So, okay, we have no other criteria. We're only looking for one strike. I'm looking in the month of December, but I forced the days to expiration to be greater than eight because I don't want to see duplicates with the weekly options that are available. And then let's say we only want to see those stocks that paid a minimum annualized dividend of at least 4%. So I'll just plug that in, and let's click Submit These Settings. Now, I still have all the data here. Um, for the uh, different um, other criteria I selected, stock symbol, expiration, net debit, uh, percent if assigned, downside protection. I see here that there's a lot of these that are have no option bid, that they haven't been trading. Well, let's go ahead. Well, I can leave that in there. But So now we kind of have a list. It shows us about 328 positions that have a dividend of greater than 4%. 
Um, now we could choose to sort it by percent dividend yield as well. If I wanted to sort from highest to lowest, let's just go back into the parameter field in the sort results table by us, select percent dividend. Let's see. Ah, percent yield, I apologize, it's by the percent yield. And I'm sorting from highest to lowest here with the radio button, so let's just click submit there. And no surprise, we see AGNC, CIM, NLY is a popular favorite um, that uh, I've been receiving calls about, Annaly Mortgage with a 14.9% dividend. What's sort of the problem with a stock that pays a 14.9% dividend? Well, there's not a lot of call premium available on those options because the stock doesn't have a tendency to move very much. <laughs> so you can have it for the 14% dividends, but you're not going to be able to generate a lot of premium off of it uh, because the call premiums are so low due to the low volatility as well. Okay, let's see here. Um, now, what I just showed, what we just showed for the percent dividend yield goes essentially for anything else too, any of the other filters as well. What if you only wanted to see those stocks that had a beta of greater than 1.5? You just wanted a wider stock list. Um, you know, stocks that had a beta of greater than 1.5, or more restrictive, let's just say between 1.5 and 2%. I could just put that in and see if there are any stocks. Okay, how many stocks did we get here that have that? It should be a fair amount. 151. There's 151 optionable stocks that have a beta between 1.5 and 2. Um, let's say if we only wanted to look for just a basic, uh, the basic stocks, how many stocks are out there that had... Um, a certain implied volatility range, I'm sorry, I should have said historical volatility range, um, for example, or certain price earnings. You can just do those one at a time. All right, Greg, is there, Greg wants to know, is there a way to display more than 20 results at a time? Yes and no. Um, we limit this down to 20 results, and the reason why we do that is because we feel to use this tool correctly, when you put in your criteria of what you want to see in a given strategy, you should probably have the limited results down to maybe only 15, 20, maybe 30 results as it is. You know, you want to use as much of the criteria as you can without filtering out too many results. Now, on the search results itself, Greg, you won't be able to, there's no way that I can select to see more results. However, if you click on printer-friendly version there up at the top of the results, it'll give you the listing there um, of, I think, essentially all of the ones that match it up to 150 um, or maybe 200 results. So you can always use the printer-friendly version if you just wanted to see more results than the 20 that are shown. And it's still sorting it by how I had it selected um, by the percent dividend yield in this case because we changed those results. Now, Greg's other question, is there a way to export search results to a spreadsheet for further manipulation? No, we do not have a direct export from the search results into Excel. There are a variety of specific reasons for that. Number one, we do realize that everyone might want to use their Excel spreadsheets to do their different calculations or to add the different columns to 